Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for another edition of Let's Talk Chelsea. Hope you're all doing well and we have got some very interesting news to talk about uh, today regarding Chelsea, regarding transfers, ins and outs and as well the Premier League um, considering the restart and the meeting that was held on Monday and how that relates to Chelsea. We're going to get into all of that today but before we do, I want to ask you guys if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Also, smash that like button because it helps out the videos as well but let's get into it because I'm pretty sure you guys before clicking this video would have heard the news about Jorginho and Miralem Pjanic uh, about a swap deal from Juventus uh, this is pretty much a picked up pace just before I started recording firstly De Marzio were reporting it yesterday as you can see on screen now about Juventus weighing up swap options for Pjanic as PSG Barcelona and Chelsea have been interested um, and really that was a could sort of insert Jorginho into a swap deal. It was sort of um, saying that Chelsea could be interested in that. But now it's been backed up by Fabrizio Romano, a very respected uh, transfer source, uh, tweeting and also disappeared in The Guardian as well. The Juventus are ready to include Pjanic in a swap deal uh, next summer. Talks have started with Chelsea for Jorginho. Sarri would like to have him back. This is big news. You know, it's really, as I say, picked up pace. You know, Fabrizio Romano, De Marzio, two people, when they start talking about transfers, there is legitimacy to it. Now, whether it happens or not, it's a big stretch. You know, it is still a long way to go with these transfers, of course, especially in the current climate. Um, but I think it's very interesting to talk about I made a video about Jorginho weeks back um, when his agent came out and sort of dismissed rumors of him leaving Chelsea. The link to Juventus has never really gone away, um, especially since uh, Sarri went there. And it's understandable, Maurizio Sarri wanting one of his best players back um, in his system. Uh, Jorginho under Maurizio Sarri can be world-class. We saw that in glimpses for Chelsea and, of course, we saw it for Napoli. And whether Chelsea would be open for it, you know, swap deals are very rare. They have been very rare for a long time. But we aren't in normal circumstances, are we? And I think clubs are going to be looking at ways to get players in. And swap deals may be the most realistic option. Now, I have to say that I don't feel this is a massive upgrade if it were to come to fruition. I feel like losing Jorginho for me would be a bit sad because I think he's a player that I think has proved a lot of people wrong this year. I think he's a very classy player. I think he's a player, that, the type of profile player I think Chelsea should be looking for in the future. And you're sort of bringing in a player of a similar quality, in my opinion, uh, similar age especially. And I don't really feel like boosts up that area in a real way. You know, I think it's more kind of like for like. I know there's a lot of people who comment on my videos, talk about Pjanic, how good he is. And I think it definitely benefits maybe Juve more than it does Chelsea in truth. Because I think uh, Lampard clearly likes Jorginho, clearly likes his leadership, has clearly trusted him a lot this season. And losing that would be, I think, of a detriment to the squad, I have to say, in my opinion, not only what he can offer, for on the pitch. I think as Simon Phillips adequately tweeted after this news came out, you know, Jorginho isn't indispensable. But in terms of a swap deal, Pjanic isn't really the player you're sort of looking for in terms of really upgrading the current squad. We're looking maybe at an Alexandro who we were talking about a few weeks back with a swap deal for Emerson uh, for Juventus. So another swap deal being talked about and De Marzio reported that as well. But I just think it's very surprising to me. It's come out of the blue. It's come out of left field. Yes, we've heard for a long time about Juventus being admirers and of course Sarri wanting Jorginho back. But I I just wasn't that you know convinced that Chelsea were gonna maybe go into negotiations for selling uh, Jorginho this summer and you know maybe by the time you've watched this Matt Law and Simon Johnson and Nizar Kinsella have started talking about this but please let me know your opinions on this swap deal do you think Pjanic would be an upgrade on Jorginho would you be upset if Jorginho was to leave Chelsea and do you think this still can happen let me know in the comments below and moving on from one potential midfielder coming into Chelsea to another a much younger midfielder uh, Angel Gomez from Manchester United the Man United young Youngster. As you can see here, a Luke Gardner reporter of Man United uh, tweeting that Chelsea are confident of signing Angel Gomez from Man United this summer. The midfielder's agent has held talks with Blues chief Marina Granoskaya. Gomez has rejected a 30 grand a week contract at Old Trafford and is out of contract this summer. Um, this is another one that's come out of left field really and surprises me. And I sort of have a similar reaction for a different reason really with Gomez. Um, firstly, I just... I don't feel like it's a player we desperately need. And I feel like the comparison I'm going to make here is look at Gomez's ability, look at his age, look at what he can do. 
And then look at our youngsters. And I just prefer our youngsters more. I just, I think it's another case of this scenario where it's like you're bringing in a player that probably isn't going to upgrade our current squad. It's probably going to find it difficult to get minutes. And I just, I don't feel it's uh, either a realistic one or I just don't feel it, it personally upgrades Chelsea that much. It's not a young player. You're sort of going out there all out and saying, even though he's not on our books, let's get him because he's going to upgrade our squad. I don't see that. And when actually comparing Gomez to say a Billy Gilmore, so taking out the likes of Mount, Tammy Abraham, Tamori, Reese James, who've played a lot of football under Frank Lampard. I wanted to compare him with a player who only just recently broke into the first team and hasn't actually got a lot of minutes uh, this season compared to other youngsters, Billy Gilmore. And uh, Billy Gilmore has more senior appearances for Chelsea this season than Gomez does for Man United. Um, only one, it's seven to six in terms of Gilmore. But still, I think that shows you because I have seen some opinion pieces from Man United reporters talking about why uh, Gomez moving from United to Chelsea would be of a detriment and be ironic because you're moving from a club who's uh, very invested in youth development to one who's not obviously referring to Chelsea there. Um, and I just find it interesting because I, you know, of course they've still got Marcus Rashford. They've got Mason Greenwood. Marcus Rashford especially, I think is an astonishing player. He's going to go on to become world-class. Since Alex Ferguson left that club have pretty much been going in the direction of spending a lot of money on big players. Chelsea have done similar and Chelsea have to invest in you for a number of years. Um, it can't just be a one-year thing. I've talked about that a lot. So by no means be criticising or maybe pointing out Man United's ability or sort of urge to sign big players um, is somehow me saying that Chelsea are now the home of youth football and youth integration into the first team. But I think... Um I don't know. It's one of those things. I just think that Gomez, for me, I don't sort that name doesn't pop out to me. You know, if Chelsea were going in for Mason Greenwood, who, of course, United, I don't think would sell. Um, different story. You know, that's a very exciting young player. Um, but Gomez, to me, doesn't improve on what we have, doesn't improve on the likes of Tino Andrian, doesn't improve on the likes of Conor Gallagher, in my opinion. I think Chelsea should be investing. Even if Gomez is a little bit further ahead in his development playing Premier League football, Gallagher's getting a lot of minutes this season at Swansea and Charlton. He's developing. And I think we should be investing in those players. And as well, he's not getting in front of Mason Mount. He's not getting in front of Mason Mount with all he's done this season. So just don't think it's that much of an improvement. Please let me know your opinions in the comments below. And lastly, I want to talk a little bit about the Premier League meeting that took place on Monday. I talked about it on Sunday's video. We hoped by the end of that meeting, we'd get some sort of conclusion or some big sort of takeaways to sort of get some clarity on what's going on. And really, it's the opposite. I think there's been a lot more confusion that's come out for fans uh, from this. What we did learn, and this is both from The Telegraph, we've done some great reporting about the Premier League meeting and inside stuff about it. What was being reported last week was only sort of the bottom six clubs were opposing this neutral venues uh, idea. But apparently Arsenal, Chelsea and Spurs are among clubs that want government to scrap idea of games at neutral grounds as well. The Premier League will ask the government to reconsider their stance on football having to restart neutral venues after being urged to do so by at least 12 of its clubs. There's some big names with in there and once again it just proves I think and disproves sorry the theory that this is only about clubs fearing relegation you know there are some big names within there who clearly want to play at their own grounds clearly like having that advantage and it's going to be a problem and it needs to be something to be rectified if the Premier League want football to restart soon and then I think I have to touch on this because I think it was just absolutely absurd I'm sure many of you saw it on social media and couldn't believe what you were reading. Players being asked to, in an attempt to avoid contact and spreading the virus, um, to turn their face away after uh, getting up from a challenge and generally avoiding face-to-face -face contact wherever possible. I think like a lot of you, when I read that on Twitter, I think it was maybe Monday night or Tuesday night, I couldn't believe what I was reading. I had to check. It was actually the Telegraph and it was actually Jason Burt who was, this was his report. And I went out and searched the article and sort of the piece in the article because it sounded like a parody. It didn't sound real. And it's obviously either it's come from, and I think Gary Neville was absolutely spot on on Sky Sports when he was talking about this in reference to this idea of, you know, turning your face away from tackles, having limited contact on a football pitch. It all comes from a power vacuum. It all comes from a lack of clarity. This is what happens. This is the lack of uh, clear information from the governing bodies to us as supporters, to the players, to the management, to everyone involved in the Premier League um, to know what's going on. And it just sounds ridiculous to me. And I'm sure maybe, of course, this has come from professional medical advice. But then you think, what's the point in playing if we're getting into a stage where players can't really have that much contact with each other? It's going to be a diluted game. It's not going to be one we enjoy watching. And I'm sure the players enjoy playing if they're constantly thinking about not getting into contact with other players it's a contact sport at the end of the day it just sounds absurd to me um as i would say it's not 
set in concrete all of this stuff but unfortunately because of the lack of clarity you get things like this coming up you get situations where the fa chief comes out and says uh, half's less than 45 minutes all of this stuff lack of communication lack of clarity it's really frustrating and it's uh unsure of what's going to happen next but please let me know your opinions on this what do you think about chelsea opposing neutral venues um do you think we're any closer to getting football back on the pitch please let me know in the comments below but that is it for this edition of let's talk chelsea thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch if you did enjoy it, hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you never miss an upload. Follow me on Twitter at Son of Chelsea and I'll see you again.